With Vectorworks 2012, there have been some serious improvements to both OpenGL Shadows and to the Heliodon tool, and so I thought it was a good opportunity to remake the uh, Heliodon tool and Sun Studies movies, which are on the OzCAD Video Tutorials DVD. Uh, this initial movie will just talk briefly about the Heliodon tool and, and some of its new features and, and just uh, some of the potential for uh, that the new features uh, give you in combination. So let's begin by uh, just taking a quick look at the tool and the uh, the Heliodon tool is in the visualization tool set. Uh, it has the same icon that it always had. When you first place a Heliodon in a drawing uh, you'll be prompted to choose a location and we've added a lot more uh, um, countries and we've added a lot more locations within Australia. You also get the option to choose now uh, varying Heliodon symbols so that you can differentiate them in the drawing and these are actually customizable as well. Uh, so if we go with the default settings there and we'll just zoom in on this a little bit and take a quick look at uh, at the change settings. So. A lot of this will look familiar to anyone who's used the Heliodon tool before, um, but there are actually fewer controls here and there are a few new controls, and we'll talk about those uh, in the series of movies. Um, one of the, uh, a couple of the interesting ones that, uh, that you can now do soft shadows uh, if you have Renderworks, and also we have a, a shadow angle calculator which will calculate the horizontal and vertical shadow angles, and again we'll talk about that uh, a bit later as well. Um, all of the solar animation now is done via the solar animation dialog and when you click this button or double click the Heliodon you'll get this new dialog that will come up and this does all of the animation. It does the on-screen animation and it does the export movie animation and the export movie animation now also includes the ability to animate the date as well as animating the time um, and you can animate the Heliodon um, in a top plan view or in a with a static model or you can animate a view from the sun. Um, with the uh, interactive settings um, we've got slider controls so even in this top plan view you can place a heliodon in the drawing and just immediately get a sense by dragging this slider of what happens during the day and where the sun is and you'll see this nice little graphic here actually gives you a a good indication of where the position of the sun is in the sky. So as we move through the day you can see that that uh, that happening and of course if we change the uh, the month of the year then the sun's getting lower in the sky and if we change uh, to a December or January then obviously the sun is getting higher in the sky. And again going backwards and forwards you can see that effect here. Um, you can now enter the time manually or date just by typing in a number. You can step through the hours like this. You can step through the minutes in whatever interval is set here. You can step through the months and the days uh, and so on. So lots of really nice uh, and better controls um, available for the Heliodon there. Okay, so let's just switch to a, a drawing. And uh, this is a little model courtesy of uh, Kennedy Associates in Sydney and um, this is a, a proposed development with some adjoining buildings on on either side and uh, we've already placed here uh, nine uh, sorry six Heliodon objects um, we'll just have a quick look at what we've got there uh, we've got 9 12 and 3 p.m. on December 22 and we've got 9 12 and 3 p.m. on June 21 uh, now, uh, if you have RenderWorks, then and and I guess that's a reasonably important part of uh, of doing sun studies. You can uh, open up the visualization palette, click on current scene, and you will see all of the heliodons listed. And you can turn them on and off simply by clicking in the on column here. So that will turn a particular one on or off, and that's pretty handy. Uh, when this is a viewport, say you're doing a, a shadow diagram and you want 
just one of these to be visible in a viewport. When you select a viewport, again, these options appear and pertain just to that viewport. So you can turn on or off any particular heliodon for any particular viewport. Um, when you're on a design layer, obviously these apply to uh, the settings here apply to all the design layers at once. So let's um, take a look at a uh, at a couple of things here. We'll go to a um, an isometric view here. Now, one of the things that's seriously better in this version are OpenGL shadows. And let's take a quick look at um, the rendering options with OpenGL shadows. Now, to see OpenGL shadows, you're going to want to have the Use Shadows turned on. And generally, you only need it set to medium. Uh, but if you want it high, uh, then and you have a reasonably good graphics card then um, then by all means you can put it on high the high will affect the faceting that happens along these edges but if you're just getting a sense um, of, from a design point of view you probably can leave it on medium now the performance of OpenGL is seriously affected by your graphics card so if you have uh, like an onboard graphics card or, a, or an old graphics card that only has you know 128 megabytes of video RAM, you know, you're not going to get stellar performance uh, from uh, from this OpenGL. You you really need to, to, to step up to the mark with, a, with a, a graphics card that has, you know, 512 megabytes of VRAM and um, uh, of course that depends on the complexity of the model. If you put a huge model in, then you're going to want a, a fast card. If you've got a simple model, then, then the um, uh, the card isn't going to be working so hard. In this computer, I have uh, it's a MacBook Pro. I've got one uh, a one gigabyte of VRAM and uh, a reasonably contemporary card, but certainly not the highest end card that we're, that we're talking about. And when I'm talking about a high end card, you know, I'm talking about if you've got a desktop machine, you know, the card might set you back, you know, 150 or 200 dollars. It's not a huge expense to get a good graphics card. Um, so they're the, the uh, OpenGL render settings, so I'm going to click OK here. And um, we've got this, uh, this June 21 um, sun uh, turned on here, so we'll go ahead and use that one. And if I want to select that on the drawing, I can right-click here, um, or if you haven't got right-click set up and you're on a Mac, you can press the Control key and uh, click. and you want to choose here select on document now if you're on the layer that the heliodon is on you can choose select on document if you're not on the layer the heliodon is on then you're going to have to choose force select because uh, select on document only works on the active layer so I am on the right layer here I believe so let's go select on document and you can see immediately that the heliodon became selected here so let's now open the solar animation and just get a sense of of how this can work. Let's begin by doing the the sun to, to layer plane center. Um, so in other words instead of animating the shadows we're going to animate uh, the model as viewed from the sun. And this is a really essential part of, uh, of trying to understand just what the sun is doing. So here we are on uh, 21st of June and if we move this around and sometimes it just takes a few frames backwards and forwards to become clear. There we go. So here we are at 7 a.m. in the morning. So that's sunrise. So I can now just watch this model and move it around here, watching what the sun does through the day. So around midday, uh, this is where the sun is shining. So any face that you can see in the model has sunlight on it. Anything you can't see it doesn't have sunlight on it. So we can immediately get a sense of where the sun rises and where the sun sets and how that's going to impact on our design. So let's flip this to say January and we get a completely different picture here now. So you can see that the sunrise is, uh, is way over here, probably not impacting on our model too much, but it doesn't take too long for that morning sun to start entering in these windows up here and uh, we can move right around the model and what gets interesting is that when you come to the late afternoon you start to see that you actually need to think about shading of these other windows in the uh, in the front of the model here because they're going to get some late afternoon sun 
and they're going to continue to get it until the sun sets at 7.09 p.m. So you can see how easy it is now to to get a sense of what the sun is doing and uh, in in any at, at any time of the year. All right, so let's switch back to the sun in the current view and uh, then we can actually animate the shadows. Um, I might just click OK here or cancel just to get us back to the previous view. Whoa, that was interesting. Let's go back to solar animation and this time we're animating the shadows and you can see now that what the shadows are doing. You can see that the performance of the shadow casting is very much better and this is real-time shadow casting which is really handy. Uh, so that's in the middle of winter. If we go to uh, to the uh, to January, again you get a sense of uh, of what the sun is doing through the day, or in fact through the year. So you can very quickly assess. Um, you know what uh, what's happening in your model um, and how the sun is impacting on things. The the final option here that we haven't used and I won't use at the moment is view sun to heliodon center and that will rotate the model about the position of the heliodon because your model isn't always in the center of uh, of the uh, of the ground plane. Um, or it might be that you want to study a particular area of uh, where you've got a shading device or something and by putting the heliodon right there in front of that window uh, the whole model will rotate about the heliodon um, about that window so you can really zoom in close and have a look what's going on. Okay so let's now take a look at uh, another nice feature and that is that uh, if we go to an interior view looking out of this model and uh, here we are on, um, well let's take a look where we are. We're in the middle of winter and this is actually one of the bedrooms looking outside so let's try and get a sense of if, if we're going to get any any sun into this model. Let's just try and improve that a bit. Sometimes you go backwards and forwards you'll get the shadows will come into sharpness. So here we are at 7 a.m. Um, in the middle of uh, winter and uh, we're getting some nice sun in there. The room's going to be nice and warm, and we can look through, look at this, and watch that. You know, by about uh, 1:30 or 2 o'clock, the sun's pretty well finished, and uh, and so there's not not uh, too much more to worry about. Let's take a look at um, at what happens in summer then, and uh, we'll go to the morning. And you can see that yes, we're getting quite a bit of sun penetration in the morning. But you know, if there were some curtains on the window, it would probably keep most of that out. And then, with the eaves that we've got, you know, by there's a little bit of sun coming in there, but by you know 12, 12:30, the sun's completely gone. So this room is is quite well shaded from the sun, and uh, as a bedroom, it would you know function quite well, uh, not be too hot um, in the in the evening. Um, let's just put the sun back in here and uh, and I'll just show one other quick thing before we finish this overview movie and we'll click OK. So looking at the sun penetration into a room kind of gives you a sense of, of uh, you know the success or failure in terms of, uh, of shading devices and so on but RenderWorks will actually also give you a sense of you know what the room will be like and I'll just do one final render here. This is kind of unrelated to um, to shadow shadows and shading. But um, let me just first show you some settings that I've made in this file um, under lighting. Set lighting options. I've got the indirect lighting set to four bounces, ambient off, and I'm using the uh, one of the standard backgrounds HDRI white to produce the light. This is essentially just going to pump light from the sky in through the window. Um, I've made one small change to that HDRI white and the default is 100. I've increased its brightness to 150 um, and 
possibly in some cases it would go even higher uh, to uh, to simulate what happens in the real world but 150 is not a bad start and finally I've put a uh, a background in here for the layer and in the organization dialog under design layers um, you'll see that you have the ability to add a renderworks background and the one I've chosen is uh, sky day mostly sunny this is just a visual thing it's not going to actually impact on what light enters the room because we're using the HDRI white for the light so finally I just want to show you my custom render work settings um, and uh, I always like to turn on anti-aliasing um, and bump that level up a bit with uh, generally you can have most of these things on low and also soft shadows I like to just increase the quality of those a little bit so let's now go ahead and render this in custom render works and just to give you a, a, a sense of what the, the room may actually be like and um, this is obviously a slower rendering process than uh, OpenGL um, but without too much geometry around it's it's not too too slow uh, the slowest bit being the um, the the reflections on the uh, louver panes there. Um, so you can see that this space uh, is going to be, you know, have a nice feel to it. It's going to be nice and bright, and uh, and the sun's going to stream in. Wouldn't mind it as a bedroom myself.